welcome to Full Time here on the Fulhamish YouTube channel. My name's Sammy James, here with Don Betts. Hello, hello. And Archie Rin Tuts here as well. Hello. You're both wearing the same Christmas jumper and it's freaking me out. Yeah, we take each other early, just make sure we make one the right one, so. I mean, it is a wonderful attire. To be fair. Great clobber. You guys have actually seen me wear this since October. Yeah, I know. As a, as a winter jumper, so. Yeah, it, it's quite well worn by now. And when I saw Dom turn up with it, I was a little bit like, it's one of us gonna have to play rock, paper, scissors to who doesn't wear it, but we've gone ahead with no, it. No, we so. were like, if someone else could take it off, but as I said, I've got a Fortuna Dusseldorf t shirt on underneath. Amazing. So I didn't know if, it, if, it, if, it, if it'd work as well. It's a top quality bit of Bundesliga clobber. So, uh, Fulham won, Wolves won. We took the lead through Ryan Sessignon, but Roman Saiz uh, got the equaliser. Disappointing, of course. We were hoping to get three points today. Dom, uh, your, your instant analysis of the match? I uh, thought overall, probably a fair result ish. I mean, there wasn't really much in the game. I mean, in the first half, like, we saw the way we were setting up. We knew we were going to say in back three, so you got the wing backs, and then you got. It's quite, I think I actually, it was quite good to see Kearney out the side because I think without Kearney in the side, it, it lets Seri play better. Yep. I've said it from the beginning of the season, those two can't play together on the same side. And I think, you know, you got the boob car, Kamara, everyone was sort of, should he be playing? I mean, I think he showed that he probably should, to be honest. He may not have the technical ability, but he's making the runs. He's put himself about, unlike on the other side, and Andre Scherler, who I didn't see him do one thing today. I don't understand what, what he's offering to the team. So, I mean, overall, I'd probably say a fair result, and it's not a result is the end of the world but you know it would have been nice to keep hold of Archie obviously you're our regular uh, Bundesliga expert so you know more about Andre Scherler than most um, you've seen him from both kind of your professional capacity and also like from being a Fulham fan um, the guy my feelings are well known about Andre Scherler but he just game after game is, is failing to deliver for me although in the first half he had some bright moments to be fair to him I thought he actually contributed to a few counter-attacks quite effectively in the first half. Overall, in Germany, he's seen as the punchline to quite a few jokes, particularly among Borussia Dortmund fans, because they paid so much for him. But I look at our attack and the way that they play, and it's all relying on moments of inspiration. Whereas, it, I, I think today you saw the biggest difference between Ranieri football and Jakanovic football. Jakanovic is planned out moves, it's all kind of well coordinated, Where, whereas under Coraglio Ranieri what we want to do is is, is a lot more different, it's, it's more relying on the right counter-attacking combination coming together, but all of the players own initiative, you saw that with the chances that Mitrovic had today, yeah. that as much as once Mitrovic gets in those positions you're like, you have to score, he doesn't because I think that by the time he gets to that position, I think he's quite tired from having yeah. had to work so hard for his chances. So, with Schürrle, I think that he's best as an impact player, as he's always been, I would say, for Germany and for Borussia Dortmund in the last few seasons, because when the game breaks down, when you've got slightly less of a form in terms of defensively, when, when the sides aren't quite as organised, he's somebody that can make a difference. He can, I think, physically, he's not quite up to it. You saw that at the start of the second half, where yeah, yeah, he just yeah. dropped off entirely. So, I think that I, like everyone else, had hoped, OK, when Schürrle has been brought into the club, there's some intelligent plan. I think that the playoff final gave everybody hope that, well, that's all come together now. And so therefore there is a real kind of thought out plan here for the way that the club have bought in the summer. And that after the whole Craig Klein business that went on behind the scenes, now this is the moment when it's all going to come together. Everyone's listening to Slav. And I think that were we to go down, which I believe we will at this stage, I, should, should we say that? But <laughs> I think that that that's what it will come back down to. Not anything that necessarily Claudio Ranieri does, but there needs to be coherence between the way that the transfer dealings are done and what the coach wants. And yeah. at the moment, we're seeing the other half of what of, of the squad, effectively, that wasn't being seen under Slavisa. Yeah, really. Our assistant Farrell has just got us uh, more pints, so uh, thank you very much, producer Farrell. Sorry, uh, Farrell. I resign. <laughs> yeah. um, Dom, though, it was a positive first half performance, and we've seen quite a few of those under Ranieri. Um, the Leicester game was a positive first half display at Craven Cottage. West Ham, up until the goals, uh, was very... between the goals, we were still probably the better side. Yeah. But up and, and again, first half today, we were by far the better side. I thought Wolves were quite poor today. They didn't offer as much as I thought they were going to. But I thought they were really passive in possession today. Yeah. All they seemed to do was just sort of passing it sideways and yeah. not really penetrate any attack, which is worrying because for them, because they've got so many good quick attackers. So 
Yeah, I thought we did quite well in the first half today, but I mean, I don't think there was many chances. The main one was obviously the ball got fizzed straight across the box and we were so close. If anyone gets a touch on that, that's going in the back of the net. Um, there's a chain which we haven't seen back yet, but apparently it should have been a red card and that obviously would have changed the game. But I think, yeah, first half was fine. If we got a goal just for half time, it obviously would have been would have been nice as a sucker punch. But yeah, I thought overall first half was, was fine and we were sort of slowly growing into the game. Yeah, Mitro missed a, a few big chances. Um, he said after the game that he could have had 100 shots and not scored today, which isn't the kind of confidence-boosting one-liner you want to hear from your main man. He is obviously suffering a little bit in yeah. front of goal. I think he is, but it, it's funny because he's been starved in front of goal for long periods, and, and that's the way of a striker, isn't it? Yeah. So goes the cliche that you don't have a chance for so many games and then you get seven at once. Yeah. I, I think... I say seven is probably a little bit exaggerated. I'd, I'd say that there's two or three today that he would back himself to score last season, or even in yeah. the, the vein of form that he's been in. So I think the problem with with the way that the team's going to try and play now is that he's going to have to continually work very hard for his own chances, and I'm not sure that there's going to be enough created by the sides to actually furnish him with that. So going forward. We've not scored from open play now since Abubakar Kamara's effort against Leicester where, to be honest, I think everyone else is saying he should have passed that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, it's an interesting point. I'm really, because like, today, again, another set piece. Um, it was a well-worked set piece, actually. And um, Sessegnon, we've missed him a lot through injury in the past uh, couple of games. He came off the bench and he had that kind of instant impact. There was also, as soon as he came on, he made a great run up the left-hand side and squared it for Kamara who actually it was good defending from I think maybe it was um, Bolly who actually got back and, and defended it but well, Bolly yeah. was quite good today actually yeah, well, yeah, he was the best second half, three. second half I thought that, that Bolly started to dominate but only because Fulham lost something of a physical threat in the having, having kind of completely blown out in the first half you could see that Kamara and Schurler couldn't quite keep up that tempo but I thought that Kamara as much as I think you could question his footballing intelligence at, for long periods this season. <laughs> I thought that Kamara's probably the most improved player yeah. that, that you've seen. Just technically, you can really see how he's come on on the ball. But the problem is, does he make enough of a difference when, once he's beaten that player, can he actually find another teammate? I can remember only one good attacking position in the in the final third that he could do that yeah. so well he, he did show that against Newcastle that chance that he made for Mitrovic who, who, who when he sh really should have done better and Lascelles it was a potential handball we, sh we saw that Kamara can have some composure and I said after that game I don't think he should be starting willing to stand corrected a little bit today because actually I thought he had a great impact um, kind of you know right from the beginning and he looked gutted to be substituted when he did if you look at I think the most recent example that we have of Ranieri football in England it is obviously that triumph with Leicester and what Ranieri wants is somebody who has extraordinary physical qualities and I don't think we can quite kind of say that Abubakar Kamara is Fulham's answer to Jamie Vardy but Vardy is exceptionally quick yeah. and that's what he wants out of he wants out, out of a player and I don't think that there is anybody else to be honest, in the Premier League, who can challenge Kamara for pace no. in terms of in terms of a, a defender? I, you saw the way that he went past two of them, just as if they weren't there. And yeah. but does he have necessarily the brain for it? Can he yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. learn to to do the right things in those areas? It's going to be, a, I think, that's one of the biggest question marks over our Fulham going to score enough goals. Yeah, completely. Second half, Dom, it was a really strange game. Wolves just had so much possession, but were doing absolutely nothing with it. And, uh, I think it was you that were saying that Wolves fans online were getting a bit frustrated because all they were doing was sideways passing non-stop for, it felt like, like a lifetime. And uh, whilst Fulham didn't have too many chances, we always kind of looked comfortable and we were keeping Wolves at an arm's length. Oh yeah, I wasn't worried by any Wolves attacks until we scored. Yeah. Yes, they had all the ball, but I was like, they're not doing anything with it. I'm not actually that worried. And that's what Wolves fans were saying. They were like, just very bad, very passive, quite boring football. And then, you know, I think the substitutions that we ended up making, obviously with Sess and Kearney coming on for Scherler and Kamara, I think, well, we basically had one effective player and one ineffective player like we had to start with. I thought Kearney offered absolutely nothing. I didn't think he was putting himself about at all. He doesn't look fit. He doesn't look fit all season long as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. 
So I don't, I don't know what's, I don't know what's up with him. What is up with Ken? Uh, it was a really odd performance from him. He, he couldn't get his foot on the ball. I don't. Uh, I, it was, it, I, I felt like he just got muscled out of it every time that he even got near. It was really strange. I don't think it's. Well, <laughs> firstly, Kenny playing at right wing is obviously no nowhere near where he wants to play. Yeah. I think you've seen it sometimes in the touchline exchanges between Kenny and Ranieri that they don't quite see eye to eye. I don't think that's too far flung to, to speculate about that nor as to what I've heard. Like, I think that <laughs> Kenny is somebody that really needs to be loved and you saw that with, with Slavisa but as, as Dom rightly says is there space for a Seri and a Kenny within the team? Sadly, I don't and, think there is. And the politics of the decision as well the player that you're most likely to sell on for a greater fee is Seri. Yeah. And I think that there's a, a greater chance that therefore that Seri will play. Whether whether or not that Kenny is going to I, I don't know, dig in and, and really want to show Ranieri, I don't know. I think it's probably the biggest test of his Fulham career so far because he's always been first choice. Yeah, he's yeah. been first name on the team sheet whenever he's fit. And now he's not got that. So how do you respond? But I agree. I, is Kenny the right man to bring on at right wing? I, I guess, what were the other options that... that well, no, I was saying that I'd much rather bring on an Aite or Cofano for Kamara because you're still getting someone who's going to offer that pace, that, that sort of direct attack, whereas yeah. Kenny wants to get the ball, faff around with it, and then play a, play a good ball out to either Cess or into Mitrovic's feet. So I think, you know, in, in that position, you're picking Kenny because he's our captain and he's... You know Tom Kearney, but what, is he really the best player to be bringing on to play in that position? No. Ah. If yeah, but if you're going to play a system right, surely you want to play the players best for that system and not try sandwiching your best players into one team. That's what our problem was at the beginning of the season. But I think Kearney can be a good player for that situation, especially when we want one nil up. I was thinking, great, because Kearney can hold on to the ball, and yeah. we all know that Kearney's ball retention is is absolutely magnificent. And normally in that situation, you know, the problem was we weren't keeping the ball up today, and Wolves just had wave after wave of, after wave of attack. But today, Kearney couldn't make it stick at all. Sure, I, I think the reason why we were able to keep the ball so well particularly in the championship is because the system plays towards that because you've got enough players around you at all times whereas what you're asking Kenny to do in terms of holding the ball up today is hold it up almost as a number nine Mitrovic figure and he is not the guy to do that and I think that that that's why you look at half the squad now who are not suited to that way of playing and you worry because it's like how is how is that going to work now in terms of dynamics? I'm not quite sure, but can you see Kearney being put back into the side to play ahead of Seri? Maybe on, on a physical level against Huddersfield because because Seri's just had however many 80 minutes today against, yeah. against Wolves. I don't know, but I wouldn't say I'm very positive right now. No, there, there, is, there still isn't a lot to be positive about. And, and, and a win today would have been a huge boost. It goes without saying, but when you actually look at, at the fixtures and obviously there's the Huddersfield game coming up and we've, we've moved off the, off the bottom of the table and depending on how Huddersfield get on against Man United, we will stay that way. But, you know, we might be able to get a win against Huddersfield, but more games are coming thick and fast and 11 points halfway through the season is a pretty bleak place well, It to is, be. but it's also one thing to look at is that the only one of the top six sides played at home so far is Arsenal. So what, five of them to play at home before the end of the season. It's another home game, not necessarily thrown away, but then... It is, I think, I think but, you can say that. Yeah, but it's OK. So it's a home game you've thrown away, which is there's just less and less winnable home games, if you want to talk, talk about it that way, coming there. Because it's what you get, what, what? Probably like ten home games in the second half of the season, maybe. Well, five of them against against top sides. Like we need to get res- we're going to need to get a result there. Apart from Huddersfield and Brighton, like those two those two games are huge as, as yeah. normal the Huddersfield game. And then you know it's just and then Burnley away after the FA Cup game against Oldham is another huge game because you know oh, a lot although a lot of our away games coming up are, are winnable, I guess you can argue that you know it's just it's getting. To, I said this actually after the Leicester game, I think that. It's, it's not, you're running out of games to say you can take a point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to stop winning these games. You do, you do. And whilst if you went away to Wolves and got a point, even in the circumstances that would be today, we'd all be sitting here and saying, good result. But Wolves are a good team. But ultimately, when you are 1 0 up with six minutes to go, you do need to make it count. Let's just quickly uh, address the goal that Wolves did score. Um, 
I mean, there was numerous things wrong with it. Moutinho just allowed so much space. It's a wonderful cross, I think, from Caballero. Um, and Joe Bryan kind of stumbles on the ball. It's, it's all a bit bizarre, and, yeah. and, and Saez just... I don't, know what, I don't know what in. Joe Bryan can... Sort of, no, I don't think it's yeah. Brian's fault. I, I don't know what Brian can do in that position because the ball's sort of at his feet and unless he somehow flicks it away from him for a corner, I don't see what else he can do. But one thing you don't want to do is step on it, fall over, <laughs> give it to remote, remain size and for him to bury it in the back of He's there. the last man in a chain of mistakes that have been made there. I question most of all how much space Dennis Adoy has given Cavallaro to cross the ball in. But I think it comes from the way that Wolves were starting to apply the pressure and... You could see Ranieri the whole of the second half trying to encourage the team to be as compact as possible and they lost that compactness in that moment. Yeah. So I think that on a cult hero level, Dennis Adoy will always be remembered for the goal against Derby, yeah. for the, that back back, the back flick against Newcastle <laughs> and so on. On the other hand, there are mistakes I think at the end of last season or, or throughout last season. I mean, the two red... You could look at it harshly and go, the red card against Villa nearly cost promotion. Yep. You could say the red card against Brentford as well was a sign, the goal given away against QPR. I think that... There's too many mistakes. And, and th this season you've seen it in as much as, even in just small moments, I remember that there was a moment against Arsenal. Didn't lead to a goal at all, but Adoy is looking around for Kevin McDonald going, where am I meant to stand? And you need to, like, there's so, like, to an extent, Alfie Mawson can help lead the line and go, okay, right let's make sure we're all here he can't be looking for too much direction I think Dennis has actually improved in the past few games you've, you've seen that but I just don't think that he's quite got it for, for the Premier League level which is a shame yeah. but it's it's having weak like that there's an element of the is about him as in like a technically gifted defender but one that just has too many mistakes in him well, no, I, think it's, I think it's odd that Adoy is in the side and you've got Maxine Lamarchand sitting on the bench. Who, well, Lamarchand has been injured. I know he has been injured, but for me, he's going to have to come in for it. In, in a back I don't think Adoy will ever be dropped. I think it's no. in his contract that he must start it's, every it's, single in, game. In a, in a back three, I think, if you got until we sign some, some players in January, Reem, Mawson and Maxime Lamarchand would be our best options. Because also, Maxime Lamarchand knows how... I know Adoy can, but I know, he knows how to occupy those positions as well. He knows how to occupy the full weapons. So, I mean, I know have, having... That many left foot centre backs might be a worry for some people, but yeah. I think that, you know, Maxi Marshall, I think, has been one of our best defenders this season. I know he's made a couple of mistakes which have led to goals, but he's probably made the least amount of mistakes in total out of all, this, out of all our defenders so far. So I think that's someone we, look, we can look to improve, and I think, you know, Shay Khan did say he was going to back Ranieri and Jan. Yeah. You know, for me, those positions are pre predominantly going to be, you know, a centre half. Um, someone who's going to who's going to be successful of, of uh, Mitrovic, and then possibly a left wing back. But you know, I think you know, Adoy, he's he does a, he's doing a job there, not a very good one, but he's it's not like it could be a, it could be a lot it could be a lot lot worse. Uh, just quickly, uh, who would you who would you sign in January? Or what positions would you sign in January? More to the points. I don't quite agree with Dom's verdict about Le Marchand. I still find him to be a little bit more than a little bit of a, of a liability at the back. I think that whoever is signed, there needs, to be a, there needs to be some thought process in terms of looking forward in that can this player play for us in the Premier League and the Championship and is willing to, to stay on board. I want to see younger players given a chance. I'd like to see Stephen Sessegnon have some chance and I want to see some, some sort of plan forward in terms of the way that the club is working because you look at the summer transfer business that was done and you can't really necessarily see all of that how all the how all the pieces fit together yeah. um, but I think that centre backs a priority has to be and I think that as well you look at somebody who if, if Mitrovic is out injured then there's nothing there is there is nothing um, Marie Font back you come <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean let's see if we sign another goalkeeper because we've signed enough of those oh, yeah, we, we love collecting goalkeepers it's <laughs> almost like Tony Khan has them on a shelf or something um, yeah I so I would say centre back. I think that also a, a full back as well. Somebody who uh, behind Cyrus Christie's is is very much needed or to play ahead of Cyrus Christie. To yeah. be honest, because again he's improved in the last few games. You can see his confidence being built. It was shattered against Arsenal, I think, as it was for most players. Yeah. But centre back, full back, striker. Yeah. 
wing up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Alan Shearer's Comedy Central roasting of Cyrus Christie on Match of the Day probably didn't do an awful lot for his confidence after oh, that wow. game, but yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a tough one, and it was a tough result for Fulham today. Obviously, I think when we went 1-0 up, we were thinking that it was going to be a great day and it was going to make our Christmas, but sadly not. We'll go again on Saturday, though, against Huddersfield. Massive game goes without saying here at the Cottage. Arch, thank you very much for being on full time. Thank you. And Dom, thank you as ever. As always. Like, comment and subscribe and we'll see you at Huddersfield. Merry Christmas, you guys.